you know? So, all right, cool. Anyway, original case incident report today we got um, none other than West Chicago native Thule two times, and rest in peace to him. This is a, a homicide and first-degree murder occurrence. It's 5100 West Melrose Street, and this was in the street, and the occurrence date was uh, December 6, 2020. The victim's name is James Roderick uh, Jr. He's a male black, black hair, braids, hairstyle, medium complexion, age 18. All right, and suspects is unknown. Uh, it says a vehicle was involved in this, a 2015 Chevrolet Impala style hard top four door gray gray damaged yes all right um notifications from the uh police officers excuse me for scrolling fast and if you hear any little bit of scraping that is my my fingers on the trackpad and i'm trying to uh eliminate that by using my fingertips more and not, not angling on my nails or whatever but that's what it is so Anyway, event number 09569, responding officers responded to a call of a person shot at Le Le LeClaire Lane, LeClaire Avenue and Melrose Street, excuse me. Upon arrival, responding officers met with BT1662A and police officer Paracello, who related to responding officers that while BT1662A would, uh, responded to a call of shots fired at 5100 West Belmont Avenue, they observed above Chevy Impala Baron stolen temporary Illinois license plate number redacted parked on an angle facing the wrong way on a one-way street at 5100 west melrose avenue further investigation at b uh further investigation bt 1662a observed unknown victim in the rear passenger seat of above vehicle with several gunshot wounds bt 1662a immediately called for ems cfd ambulance number 63 arrived on scene and were unsuccessful in treating roderick james the victim Roderick James, the victim, was pronounced DOA at 1711 hours by CFD Ambulance Number 63 via Dr. Lee of North uh, Northwestern Medical Center. All right, and we're going to get down into this. This is a progress uh, violent scene report. This was submitted on January 12th. This is a, uh, this is a field investigation progress violent scene report. And the victims is James Roderick Jr. Uh, his res uh, residence is redacted, of course. Uh, description, black hair, braids, hairstyle, medium complexion. Um, suspects unknown. Victim's injuries was fatal. All right. Um, nothing to know here. So we're going to get down to an investigation. All right. We have a victim, James Roderick L. Jr., male 118, a.k.a. Thule. And rest history, DNA, red hooded sweatshirt with no love loss on the chest, black jeans, black pants with three stripes worn under the jeans, white Nike gym shoes with gray socks, blue face mask in front, sweatshirt pocket, white t-shirt with ghost mob on chest, blood stain slash four bullet holes, tattoo 918 on six on right hand, forever on right hand, red heart on right hand, two times with wings on neck. Injuries, four gunshot wounds to the chest, one gunshot wound to the left wrist, one gunshot wound to the right palm, one gunshot wound to the right hand, middle finger, one gunshot wound grazed wound right wound, excuse me, to right hand, middle finger, one gunshot, gunshot wound grazed wound to right shoulder. All right, and they have some weapons, and it seems to be a, a make a Taurus, a PT, a 40 caliber, a 9 millimeter. A Sig Sauer, Glock 17, Arrestees, we have one Quincy, nicknamed Q, uh, nicknamed Davo, one nicknamed Daisky, and a vehicle is the Impala Dark Gray. Location of occurrence, approximate weather and lighting, approximately 36 degrees, cloudy nighttime with artificial lighting, which usually means street lights. Uh, date and time of occurrence, December 6, 2020, at 2153 hours. Manner and motive, victim was shot four times in the chest while seated in the rear passenger side of a vehicle. Identified by, redacted. Evidence is listed. Gunshot residue kits uh, were brought out. Some DNA swabs were taken. There was a, in the guns that they found, there was live rounds in some of the chamber, in a chamber. Uh, live rounds in the Taurus chamber. 
Let me just get down. It's a lot of evidence. See if we can get down into an investigation or a narrative. Inventory some photo arrays. Some photographs. A lot of evidence in this case. A lot of pictures. They have some private video. Probably from residences since it's re uh, redacted. Next of kin redacted, interviewed redacted, investigation. All statements contained herein are encapsulated in essence and must not be considered verbatim accounts unless otherwise noted. All distances and physical identifiers are approximations and may not be accurate unless otherwise stated. The reporting detective was assigned this investigation by Lieutenant Foster, number 440 of this command on December 6, 2020 at 1725 hours. The reporting detectives was informed that a male victim was discovered and I'm sorry, was discovered shot inside of a vehicle at Melrose and Leclerc on the 016th district, responded to a call of shots fired at 5100 West Belmont. CFD responded and pronounced victim deceased. The reporting detectives immediately proceeded to the scene and arrived on scene at 1800 hours. While en route to Melrose and Leclerc, the reporting detective monitoring Zone 1 radio became aware that 016th district personnel initiated a foot pursuit in the area of 3100 North Laramie. During this foot pursuit, three male black subjects fled from beat 1699. This foot pursuit ended with three subjects being placed in custody and three handguns being recovered. Upon initiation of this foot pursuit, Detective Williams responded to the area of Barry and Leclerc to assist in gathering information and evidence. Upon arrival on scene, the reporting detectives observed the 5100 block of West Melrose Street to be a one-way street with traffic traveling east and residential buildings on both sides of the streets. The reporting detectives observed the 3200 block of North Leclerc Avenue to be a one-way street with traffic traveling southbound and residential buildings on the west side of Leclerc. The reporting detectives observed Foreman High School to occupy the entire east side of the 3200 block of North Leclerc. The intersection of Melrose, Melrose and Leclerc was observed to be a three-way intersection with eastbound traffic on the 5100 block of Melrose ending at Leclerc. The re responding detectives observed the scene to be cordoned off by crime scene tape in the 016th district patrol vehicles. The reporting detectives observed crime scene tape extending across Melrose on the west side of Leclerc at the three-way intersection of Melrose and Leclerc. Cl crime scene tape was also extended across Melrose at approximately 5120 Melrose. Beach 1622's marked car was parked in the intersection of Melrose and Leclerc and blocked the eastern border of the crime scene. Beach 1623 parked, was parked at approximately 5140 West Melrose and blocked the western border of the crime scene as well as the eastbound traffic on Melrose. The reporting detectives observed a dark gray Chevrolet Impala at 5100 West Melrose. This vehicle was facing northwest with the passenger side tire several inches from the north curb of Melrose. The reporting detectives observed all the passenger doors to the Impala were open and observed several plastics places of ballistic damage to the exterior of the Impala. Upon approach to the Impala, the reporting detectives observed victim laying in the rear passenger side seat, leaning towards this, leaning inwards to the center of the vehicle with the victim's head facing downward near the center of the victim's rear seat. The reporting detective observed multiple bullet holes on the exterior of the Impala and the passenger side rear window to be broken out. A large piece of this window was hanging by the safety glass membrane, which had several bullet holes in the laminate. On the passenger side of the Impala, the reporting detectives observed multiple bullet holes in the exterior of the vehicle, which showed the bullet's path to be ex exiting the vehicle. The reporting detectives did not observe any bullet holes which d indicated bullets entering the Impala. The reporting detectives observed multiple cartridge casings inside and outside of the Impala marked by crime scene markers. The reporting detectives observed the license plate attached to the Impala was Illinois' temporary, temporary plate redacted. Upon speaking with beat 1622 and the reporting detectives learned that this plate was reported stolen on november 16 2020 under le on under leads numbers listed a vn check of the vehicle revealed the vehicle itself to be stolen while on the scene at 5100 west melrose the reporting detectives was approached by beat 2352 2532 a police officer perez and uh po go Beat 2532 related that approximately 1645 hours they were dispatched to a call of shots fired at a Bloomin at Bloomingdale and Laramie. 
The responding detectives also learned that a spot a shot spotter event was recorded at 1641 37 hours at 5171 West Bloomingdale. This incident was documented under RD number listed. Beat 2532 related that the offending black Chevrolet was involved in a shooting at 1751 North Laramie where shots were fired at a 2013 Silver Ford Escape. This Chevrolet then fled northbound. Beat 2532 communicated with Beat 22502S and learned that this Chevrolet had been had left the BP gas station at Laramie and North immediately prior to this incident at 1639.21 hours. Beat 2532 was able to view the footage recorded at the BP gas station, which depicted the Chevrolet that the recorded reporting the, uh, uh, detectives observed at 5100 West Melrose. The video shows several individuals exit and then re-enter the rear seat to the Chevrolet Impala. One of the inv individuals observed in the video was the victim, Roderick James. James was observed to be seated in the rear passenger seat side side seat of the Chevrolet in the video. This video was subsequently recovered by Area 5 ATC personnel. While on scene at 5100 West Melrose, the reporting detectives with Detective David Williams, Williams related the following that following that the foot pursuit that was initiated by Beat 1699, three male subjects were placed in custody. In addition to these three subjects being placed into custody, three handguns were recovered. Williams also related that several addresses, addresses with private video were identified in that Area 5 ATC office was recovering that footage. The three arrestees were transported to Area 5 for further processing. Uh, B officers arrived on scene and processed the scene. E.T. Um, Gonzalez recorded and took over all the close-up photographs on the scene. E.T. Bazarek and Gonzalez recovered items of evidentiary value and assigned them to a CPD inventory number in accordance with the current procedures. A canvas was, is, which is the subject of a separate report was conducted. The reporting detectives along with Fellow team members relocated to Area 5 Detective Division. Upon arrival to Area 5, the reporting detectives spoke with Detectives McCarthy and Hurley. McCarthy stated that each of the three arrestees were placed in separate processing rooms and a gunshot residue kit was performed on each arrestee. McCarthy stated that Redacted was placed into interim room, room number 6 and was read Miranda rights at 2225 hours in the presence of his mother, Sydney Redacted. At 2228 hours, Redacted invoked his rights to cancel. McCarthy stated that Davis and Francis was placed into interview room number one and was read Miranda rights at 2055 hours. Francis did not invoke his right to counsel but was uncooperative during interview attempts. McCarthy stated that Quincy Cole was placed into interview room number four and was read Miranda rights at 1954 hours. The following is a summary of Cole's interview which was captured on ERI. Cole was interviewed by Detective McCarthy in interview room number four after being read Miranda writes, Cole stated that he understood these rights. For further information regarding this interview, see the electronically recorded interview. The reporting detectives followed the private video, which was recovered by Area 5 ATC office. This location is the, loca the McDonald's location, M McDonald's restaurant and BP gas station convenience store. Although these businesses have different addresses, they share several security cameras both inside and outside each establishment. At 1638 hours, a dark colored Chevrolet Impala with no headlights on and no front license plate can be seen entering the parking lot. Two male black subjects exit the rear seat to the Chevrolet and enter the BP convenience store. These subjects were later identified as Arrestee Warren and Tyrell, Tyrell Mahone. After seeing, selecting several items from the convenience store, whose, these two subjects exit the store, turn to the Chevrolet. Warren enters the rear seat on the driver's side. Mahone opens the rear passenger side door, at which time victim James exits and allows Mahone to enter the vehicle first, placing Mahone in the rear seat, rear center seat. James then re-enters the Chevrolet and sits in the rear passenger seat, side seat. The front, passage, the front seat passengers do not exit the vehicle. The Chevrolet then exits the, the parking lot towards the North Ave at 1639.30 hours. This location is a residence located on the southeast corner of Bloomingdale and Laramie. The two security cameras at this location capture this, the intersection of Bloomingdale and Laramie. At 1641 hours, the Chevrolet can be seen northbound on Laramie, approaching the stoplight controlled intersection at Bloomingdale and Laramie. The Chevrolet stops at the red light directly behind one vehicle that was already stopped at the intersection. At this point, a silver Ford SUV can be seen northbound on Laramie approaching the intersection at Bloomingdale from behind the Chevrolet. This Ford pulled along the right side of the Chevrolet and stopped alongside the Chevrolet. At this time, flashes can be seen coming from the passenger side of the Chevrolet and the Chevrolet accelerated northbound on Laramie swerving to the left of the car stopped at the red light in front of the Chevrolet and disregarding the red light at Bloomingdale. 
The Chevrolet proceeded northbound on Laramie. The four remain, remained on scene until police personnel arrived. This location is a multi-unit apartment building located on the northwest corner of Leclerc and Barry at 1645.05 hours. Chevrolet can be seen traveling at a high, high rate of speed northbound on Leclerc approaching Barry. The, the Chevrolet disregarded the stop signs at both Leclerc and Barry and uh, Leclerc and Fletcher and continued northbound through Belmont. The Chevrolet then turned westbound onto Melrose and out of camera view. The residence at Redacted West Melrose has several cameras in, in the front of the location that face in multiple directions. One of these cameras is faced eastbound toward Leclerc and captures the intersection of Leclerc and Melrose as well as a partial view of the 5100 block of West Melrose. This camera is, a mo is motion activated. The pertinent video segment recorded on this camera starts at 1646.35 hours. A dark colored vehicle can be seen at the beginning of this video parked on the northwest corner of Melrose and Leclerc with the rear of this vehicle extending into traffic on Melrose. This vehicle is the dark gray Chevrolet Impala that reporting detectives observed at the crime scene with victim James in the rear seat. Two individuals wearing dark clothing can be seen in near the Chevrolet during the video. Based on the known positioning of the Chevrolet, these individuals are observed to be on the passenger side of the vehicle. Two additional vehicles can be seen walking away from the Chevrolet on the south sidewalk of Melrose. One of these individuals is wearing a red hooded sweatshirt and blue jeans, and the other individual is wearing a black jacket, a light colored sweatshirt worn under, under this black jacket and dark pants. As these two individuals walk westbound on the sidewalk, the individual wearing the black jacket can be seen removing this black jacket and carrying it by hand. These two individuals were identified as arrestee Quincy Cole and Tyrell Mahone. As Cole and Mahone approached 5125 West Melrose, an individual walked down the front steps to 5125 West Melrose and stood on the sidewalk in front of 5125 West Melrose. Cole and Mahone continued walking westbound and approached this individual. The individual was later identified as redacted. These two individuals wearing dark clothing then walked southbound away from Chevrolet, from the Chevrolet crossing Melrose. The video ends at this point. This is a ring camera attached to the front of the residence at above location. The camera is motion activated, is pointed north and captured the sidewalk and street directly in front of this residence. At 1646 hours, Cole and Mahone can be seen walking westbound on the sidewalk, south sidewalk of Melrose past this location. This is a ring camera attached to the location of the residence at above. This camera is motion activated, is pointed north, and captured the sidewalk and street directly in front of this residence. At 1646.49 hours, Cole and Mahone can be seen walking westbound on the si south sidewalk of, this, of Melrose past this location. This address is a subway restaurant located on the northeast corner of Laramie and Belmont. There are two cameras associated with this address. One camera is attached to the west side of the building and, the, and is pointed northwest. The cam this camera captured the parking lot and both the sidewalk and street on the 3200 block of North Laramie up to the north alley of Belmont. The other camera is attached to the south side of the building, is pointed east, and captured the 5100 block of West Belmont. At 1729 hours, Cole and two individuals emerged from the north alley of Be Belmont and walked southbound past the front of the subway. It can be seen that these three subjects did not walk from the sidewalk on the east side of Laramie, but exited from the east alley into the parking lot area. At this time, the two individuals that Cole was observed walking were with were, with, were identified as arrestees Redacted, Redacted, and Davidson Francis. Cole, Warren, and Francis continued walking southbound and then proceeded eastbound on the north side of Belmont out of camera view. At 1733 hours, Cole, Warren, and Francis re-entered camera view, crossed to the south side of Belmont at approximately 5129 West Belmont and walked southbound through the parking lot that occupies the south side of Belmont from 5131 to 5200 West Belmont. At 1742 hours, Mahone is seen walking southbound on the east sidewalk of Laramie and entered the subway parking lot. Mahone then entered a dark sedan with a lift light in the front windshield. This vehicle then proceeded northbound on Laramie. This camera is attached to the north side of the alley garage at above address and face eastbound down the alley. At 1734 hours, Cole, Redacted, and Francis are seen walking westbound in the alley past this address. 
Redacted, this is this location is a single family residence that has multiple cameras attached that capture both the front and rear to this residence. At 1741 hours, Cole and Davidson can be seen emerging from the west side of this of the residence located at 5148 West Berry. Warren can be seen emerging from the east side of that same address. All three walk southbound across Berry towards the front of 5147 West Berry. At this time, Beat 1699 can be seen southbound on Laramie and turning eastbound on Berry towards the three subjects that are crossing Berry. While walking across the street, Davidson can be seen retrieving an item from his waistband with his right hand. Upon reaching the sidewalk directly in front of 5147 West Berry, Davidson can be seen transferring this item to his left hand. At this time, the object can be seen to be a handgun. Cole Warren and Davidson then run this, then run southbound through the gangway on the west side of 5147 West Berry with 1699 in pursuit. The camera attached to the west side of the garage at 5147 West Berry faces southwest and captured the wood fence slash gate at that at that address leading to the south alley of Barry as well as the alley itself behind that address. Cole and Warren are seen scaling this wood fence and running eastbound in the alley. Several minutes later at 1744 hours, Davidson is seen walking eastbound in the alley past this camera. An additional camera is at this address and it is attached to the south side of, of the garage in the alley. This camera faces eastbound down the alley. Cole and Warren are seen running eastbound down the alley where they both eventually proceed southbound and out of view. Davidson is then observed walking eastbound down the alley and out of view. Redaction. This location is a multi-unit apartment building that has several cameras attached that capture the front and rear of this building. Attached to the alley garage is a camera that faces westbound. This camera captured Cole and Warren after jumping the fence at 5147 West Berry, run eastbound down the alley down the alley and past this location. While running down the alley, Cole can be seen retrieving a handgun from his sweater pocket with his right hand. Cole then threw this handgun onto the roof of the garage at above address. Several minutes later, Davidson can be seen walking eastbound past his camera. After reviewing the video footage from 5128 West Melrose, Detective David and Jennifer Gross were uh, relocated to the area of 5125 West Melrose in search of the black jacket that Mahone was observed taking off. Williams and Gross discovered several pieces of evidence at 5125 West, Mel West Melrose, including a black jacket substantially similar to the jacket that Mahone is observed wearing, and a 9mm, 9mm Glock handgun. Williams requested an evidence technician to recover these items and process scene. Beat 1634 guarded the scene at 5125 West Melrose, while on scene, police officer Hernandez was approached by Redacted, who asked to speak with a detective. Williams called Redacted, who related that she owns the residence located at 5125 West Melrose. Redacted stated that her mother lives at the address with her nephew, Redacted. Redacted stated that her mother observed Redacted and several males in the backyard talking at approximately 1645 hours. Redacted talked to uh, Redacted who related that Cole Davidson and two other males were they were requesting that Redacted call an ambulance. Detectives Williams and Ace Vito relocated to Redacted where Redacted agreed to accompany them back to Area 5 for an interview. <laughs> The, re the reporting detectives reviewed the case report <coughs> recorded under RD number listed. This report listed the victim from the aggravated assault at Bloomingdale and Laramie as redacted. Detectives Shrevester and Ace Vito relocated to uh, 4943 West Wabanasia where they observed the 2013 Ford Escape that redacted was driving while at the intersection of Laramie and Bloomingdale. This vehicle was toward the towed excuse me, for further processing of possible ballistic evidence. Redacted agreed to accompany Shrevester and Ace Vito to Area 5 for interview. Interview of Redacted. The reporting detectives interview Redacted at his residence during the initial canvas at 5100 West Melrose. Redacted related that he was sitting in his parked vehicle at approximately 5119 uh, West, Mel well, excuse me, West Melrose. <laughs> he, he observed a gray car that was northbound on, on Leclerc, turned westbound on Melrose. Redacted observed four male black individuals exit the gray car. Two of these individuals walk west past his location on the south sidewalk of Melrose, and two individuals walk southbound on Leclerc and out of his view. Redacted was view interviewed via Zoom by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, where he related the same. Interview of Redacted. Redacted related that she was outside her residence at Redacted when she observed a dark car pull up to the northwest corner of Melrose and Leclerc. Redacted then observed four male blacks get out of the car. One of these males went to the rear passenger side door and appeared to retrieve a handgun from the vehicle. 
The four males then walked away from the vehicle. Redacted was interviewed via Zoom by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office where she related the same. Interview of Redacted. Redacted stated that he was inside his residence at Redacted with his friend Redacted received a call from Redacted. Redacted who related he was outside and that he needed an ambulance. Redacted went outside of his residence with Redacted and observed Cole Warren Davidson and Mahone. Warren then used Redacted cell phone to contact 911. Cole, Warren, and Davidson then left Redacted's residence, southbound through the alley, and Mahone walked towards Melrose. For further details, refer to ERI recorded interview. Interview of Redacted. Redacted stated that as he was driving northbound on Laramie, he pulled up to a red light at Bloomingdale. Redacted observed a dark-colored four-door vehicle in his, on his left when he stopped at the red light. Redacted observed the front passenger side window of the dark four-door lower and, and observed a handgun pointed in his direction. Redacted then ducked and heard multiple gunshots being fired. When Redacted looked up, the dark four-door vehicle was driving away northbound on Laramie. Redacted was interviewed via Zoom by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office where he related the same. The medical examiner requested that uh, requested the remains of the victim for further investigation, which was given case number listed by investigator uh, Hampton. Beat 1622 requested Allied Body Removal Services to remove the remains of the victim to the med medical examiner's office. While on the scene, the reporting detectives notified the victim's father, redacted, that Roderick James was deceased. ATC personnel will follow up on possible private video and uh, identified during the canvas. And we have another document, which is a canvas document that was submitted on January 10th, 2021. This is a field investigation canvas report. See the victim here, James Roderick Jr., male 118, aka Thule. All right, uh, this report should be read in conjunction with any previously, as well as any succeeding submitted reports listed under RD number listed. All statements and interviews are transcribed in summary and should not be considered verbatim accounts unless otherwise noted. On December 6, 2020, Area 5 detectives on scene conducted an initial canvas of the area surrounding the murder of Roderick James. The results of which are as follows. The redacted did not see or hear anything. So these must be uh, witness uh, statements from the canvas report. And they're just going around door to door potentially and asking what they saw or heard. And we're just going to read through all the things that are not redacted. Did not see or hear anything. No cameras. Vacant. Did not see or hear anything. Did not see or hear anything. Did not see or hear anything. Ring video emailed. Did not see or hear anything. Did not see or hear anything. So everyone didn't see anything. I'm just gonna give a summary. So nobody saw anything. And the investigation continues. Next document we have is a morgue report that was submitted on December 8th, 2020. This is a field investigation morgue report. Uh, suspects are still unknown at this time. All uh, right, investigation. Um, Dr. Arun Kumar performed, performed an autopsy on the remains of Roderick James and determined the cause and manner of death to be multiple gunshot wounds slash homicide. Multiple gunshot wounds to the chest, back, and arms. Internal examination, one medium caliber projectile and a bullet fragment recovered. Right, please refer to Dr. Akumar's uh, final report for a detailed description of injuries, including correlating entrance and exit wounds as well as detailed information recovered on recovered bullets. Next document we have is a case supplementary report that is a progress report. This document was submitted April 4th, 2022. This is a field investigation progress report. Victims James Roderick, of course. And that would be Thule. Going down to uh, investigation. All right. We have victims here listed. We know offender. We have AKA Q. Quincy, offenders gang affiliation, conservative, vice lord, ghost mob. We have some uh, inventories that they're inventorying, data disk containing AT&T cell phones, search warrant returns, a lot of search warrants. 
All, sum, all statements contained herein are encapsulated in essence and must not be considered verbatim accounts unless otherwise noted. All distances and physical identifiers are approximations and may not be accurate unless otherwise stated. The report should be read in conjunction with all reports generated under RD number listed. On December 6, 2020, the reporting detectives learned the, that the three handguns were recovered after Roderick James was discovered deceased at 5100 West Melrose. These handguns included a Sig Sauer P329 millimeter that was recovered at 5136 West Nelson, a Smith & Wesson SD9VE 9 millimeter that was recovered at 5154 Westbury, and a Taurus 247 Pro 40 caliber that was recovered at 5149 Westbury. The Sig Sauer P329 millimeter is the black handgun that Quincy Cole is observed in the on video to throw onto the roof of the gate garage at 5136 West Nelson. These three firearms were recovered by E.T. Jirasi, who also took photographs regarding each of these recoveries. The recovery and processing of these firearms is documented under crime scene processing report listed. Each of these firearms were sent to CPD Forensic Services for fingerprint analysis as well as DNA swabs. The Smith & Wesson SD9 VE 9mm fingerprint analysis was documented under crime scene report number listed. The Taurus 247 Pro 40 caliber fingerprint analysis was documented under crime scene report listed. The Sig Sauer P329 millimeter fingerprint analysis was documented under crime scene report number listed. Both the Taurus and Smith and Wesson testing revealed the presence of ridge impressions. These fingerprints were subsequently submitted to the Illinois State Police Crime uh, Lab for testing and analysis under the and analysis under ISP request form number listed. The DNA swabs from each of the three firearms was submitted to ISP under ISP request form listed. And if the audio sounds a little different, guys, I had to switch rooms in this uh, clip of the video. Um, uh, my kids were just banging. I couldn't even get it out to you. So, on December 7, 2020, at 5125 West Melrose, Detective Williams, number 21613, and Gross, number 21. 080 discovered a Glock 17 9 millimeter excuse me 9 millimeter semi-automatic handgun bearing serial number listed the handgun was discovered inside a garage can in the rear alley of 5125 West Melrose detective Williams and Gross notified forensic services and requested assistance ET Sherpunski uh, responded to 5125 West Melrose excuse me uh, Sherpunski uh, Sherpunski I don't know how to pronounce that Process this scene accordingly, taking photographs and recovering evidence, including the Glock 17. This handgun was observed to have damage to the grip and magazine. The, the handgun was photographed, and upon examination of these photographs, the reporting detective observed two areas of damage on the Glock's grip. The damage appeared to be a firearm projectile damage to the front and lower left side of the grip. The Glock's magazine had damage which corresponded to the damaged grip areas. Upon further investigation, suspected blood biological matter was observed on the grip of the Glock. Suspected, the suspected blood was swabbed for biological material and this swab was sent to ISP for testing and analysis. This was documented under ISP request form number listed. On July 21st, 2020, the reporting detectives received the results of this testing. The biological material that was taken from the Glock's grip matched with a 1 in, one, one in 1 1.3 octillion frequency which compared to the DNA profile that was extracted from James by the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. The reporting detective submitted a lab supplementary report detailing these findings. The recovery of this Glock as well as the scene processing at 5125 West Melrose is documented under CPD crime, process, crime scene processing report listed. The Glock was further subjected to fingerprint analysis which did not reveal the presence of ridge impressions. This analysis was documented under crime scene report listed. On December 6, 2020, while on the scene of 5100 West Melrose, a total of 24 suspended shell casings were recovered. 20 of one, 21 suspended shell casings were recovered from inside the dark Chevrolet Impala. Two suspended shell cases were recovered on the street near the rear driver's side door, and one suspended shell case was recovered from the trunk lid of the Chevrolet. These suspended shell cases were compared against the four recovered handguns for matching purposes. These test results showed the Sig Sauer P329mm fired 11 of the suspended shell of the expended 9mm shell casings. The Smith & Wesson SD9VE 9mm fired 8 of the expended 9mm shell casings. The Glock G17 9mm fired 3 of, three of the expended 9mm shell casings and the Taurus PT 247 40 caliber fired the two recovered 40 caliber expended shell casings. 
These findings were documented in CPD crime processing report listed. During the course of the investigation on December 6, 2020, Detective Hurley and McCarthy conducted gunshot residue kits on arrestees Quincy Cole, Davon Warren, and uh, Davidson Francis. These gunshot residue kits were administered in the area five following the arrest of Cole. Redacted in Francis, the recovery of these gunshot residue kits is documented under crime scene processing report listed. The reporting detective subsequently submitted these three gunshot residue kits to the ISP crime lab for testing and analysis. The ISP request form number was documented under 80, uh, documented under number listed. On February 9, 2021, the reporting detective received an ISP laboratory report detailing the findings of this examination. The gunshot residue kit results showed that samples collected from both left and right hands of Cole Warren and Francis all contained a minimum of three tri-component and additional consistent PGSR particles. The conclusion of this test was that Cole Warren and Francis each discharged a firearm, contacted a PGSR-related item, or had both hands in the environment of a discharged weapon. The reporting detective submitted a lab supplementary report detailing these findings. During the course of this investigation on December 6, 2020, gunshot residue swabs were taken from Ryder James Jr. hands while on the scene at 5100 West Melrose. These gunshot swabs were submitted to ISP Crime Lab for testing and analysis under ISP request form number listed. On December 7, 2020, Redacted was shown four separate photo lineups while in Area 5 Detective Division. These photo lineups display images of Redacted, Quincy Cole, Davis, and Francis, and Redacted Mahone. Redacted identified each of these subjects as a person that Redacted saw at his home address of 5125 West Melrose on December 6, 2020. Detectives uh, Story and Adams each completed supplementary reports documenting these photo lineups. On December 7, 2020, 2020 Redacted was shown three separate photo lineups while in Area 5 Detective Division. These photo lineups display images of Derek, Davon Warren, Quincy Cole, and Davidson Ford Francis. Redacted was unable to make identification in regards to who shot at him at Laramie and Bloomingdale on December 6, 2020. On December 7, 2020, at approximately 12.45 a.m., Detective Vecito uh, and another detective relocated to 4943 West Wabangia in an attempt to locate the 2013 Ford Escape bearing Illinois license plate uh, redacted that was driven by redacted on December 6, 2020 at the intersection of Bloomingdale and Laramie. Upon arrival on the 4900 block of West Wabangia, Obsido and another detective located the Ford parked on the street at 4947 West Wabangia. All right, and Detective Acido and the other detective notified forensic services and requested assistance in processing the Ford at its current location. ET responded to 4947. West Wabangia photographed the Ford and recovered one bullet fragment from the on top of the driver's side door. E.T. Conrath completed CPD crime scene processing report regarding the vehicle processing. The Ford was towed for further investigation, including a search warrant to be executed at a later date for possible ad additional ballistic evidence. The 025th District Officers P.O. O'Donnell and Tepesi ordered a tow for the Ford and, and remained on scene until it was towed. On December 10, 2020, at 1.35 p.m., uh, technicians responded to Pound 4 Garage and executed search warrant listed on the 2013 Ford Escape. Forensics personnel photographed the Ford and recovered several pieces of ballistic evidence, including three fire projectiles and one projectile fragment. This search warrant execution was documented under CPD Crime Scene Processing Report listed. On December 14, 2020, the reporting detective submitted ISP request form number listed and another, ooh, excuse me, another number listed. The purpose of these results was to compare all recovered firearms against all recovered projectiles in an attempt to identify a match. On September 16, 2021, the reporting detectives received the results of the testing. These results showed that the Sig Sauer P329 mm fired four recovered projectiles and two projectile fragments. One of these fire projectiles was recovered from the trunk of the gray Chevrolet Impala at 5100 West Melrose. Two projectiles were recovered from the rear passenger side back seat of the Chevrolet and one projectile was recovered by the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office lodged in Roderick James Jr.'s test. The two projectile fragments that were shown to have been fired by the Sig Sauer were recovered from the damaged magazine of the Glock 17. The reporting detective submitted a lab supplementary report with these findings. On December 6, 2020, a red Apple iPhone was dis rediscovered, oh, excuse me, recovered from Davis and Francis at the time of his arrest. This phone was subsequently discovered to belong to Roderick James Jr. On the 7th of December, 2020, the reporting detectives with the sister of Redactor related that she is aware of James' phone unlock code and provided this code, um, 0328, the, to the reporting detectives. 
Redacted also provided the phone number for James phone redacted the reporting detectives called the red Apple iPhone and observed the phone to display an incoming call from the department issued cell phone that was used to place this call the reporting detective was unable to unlock the red Apple iPhone that was in France's possession with the code that redacted provided the unlocked red Apple iPhone was given to the area 5 ATC office at which time this iPhone was downloaded onto cell bright software for further examination. Detective Schwarzer submitted a search warrant for the AT&T phone number redacted on December 19th. The reporting detectives received AT&T search warrant return information. They included call detail records and subscriber information. This included call detail records and subscriber information. During the course of this investigation on December 8th, 2020, Detective Schwarzer submitted search warrant listed for the Red Apple iPhone with phone number redacted. The cell phone was in redacted's possession at the time of his arrest using this the uh, Cellbrite software to examine James' phone data. The reporting detectives observed that James' listed phone number redacted belonged to redacted. On January 6, 2021, the reporting detectives took this red iPhone computer forensics laboratory for examination and ex extraction of data. On March 5, 2021, the reporting detectives received T-Mobile search warrant return information. This included call detail records and subscriber information. During the co course of this investigation on December 8, 2020, Detective Schwarzer submitted search warrant listed for the Black Apple iPhone with the cell phone number redacted. This cell phone was in Quincy Cole's possession at the time of his arrest using the Cellbrite software to examine James' phone data. The reporting detectives observed, observed that James listed, listed the phone number redacted to belong to Davo. On January 6, 2021, the reporting detectives took this Black Apple iPhone to the RCFL for examination and extraction of data. On March 5, 2021, the reporting detectives re received T-Mobile search warrant return information. This include call detail records, subscriber information. During the course of this investigation on December 8th, 2020, Detective Schwarzer submitted another search warrant for the Black Apple iPhone with the cell phone number redacted. This cell phone was in Quincy Cole's possession at the time of the arrest. Using the Cellbrite software to examine James' phone data, the reporting detectives observed that James listed the phone number redacted to belong to Q. All right, and they're tying the numbers to uh, the um, suspects. During the course of this in, in, uh, information on January 15, 2021, the reporting detectives submitted a search warrant for the T-Mobile phone number redacted. This phone number um, that redacted provided to reporting detectives on December 7th, 2020. All right. During the course of this investigation, the reporting detectives received the Cook County Medical Examiner's report detailing the post-mortem examination of Roderick James Jr. This report details the injuries that James had sustained on December 6, 2020. The medical examiner discovered that James had sustained multiple gunshot wounds to his body, including four separate gunshot wounds to his chest. All four of these gunshot wounds coursed from the front to back, left to right, and downward. One of these projectiles was discovered lodged in James' chest by the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office during this post-mortem examination. The remaining pro three projectiles exited the right side of James' back. This examination is documented in Cook County Medical Examiner's report listed. On March 10, 2020, the reporting detectives received an ISP lab report detailing the results of ISP request form number listed. The results that the re reporting detectives received were for the examining of the latent prints that were taken from the Taurus 24-7 Pro 40 caliber handgun. This report identified redacted as the standard for these prints. The reporting detective submitted a lab report detailing these findings. This investigation remains in progress. And we have a progress lineup document that follows this. And this was submitted January 26, 2022 at 1537. All right, and we'll scroll down to that. All right. <clears throat> and we have an investigation Audio video recording of photo array witness redacted did not consent to either video or audio recording stating he was in fear for his life. And we have person viewing the photo lineup redacted, photo array participants redacted. And we have an investigation. The reporting detective was assigned an independent administrator for the above listed photo. The photo arrays were administered in area five at that address listed. Redacted was provided with two photo spread advisory forms, which he reviewed, acknowledged, and signed. Redacted did not consent to be either video or audio recorded for either photo array, that, stating that he was in fear for his life. Redacted was administered photo array 1 at 1020 hours on December 7, 2020, and upon viewing the said photo array, Redacted identified the subject in position number 2. 
While circling the subject in position number two, Redacted stated, that's who I saw in my yard. They call him Redacted. Further indicated that he also knew the person he identified in position number two by his Facebook name, Redacted. At the conclusion of photo array one, Redacted and Detective Story signed the bottom of the advisory form. Redacted was administered a photo array two at 1025 hours on December 7, 2020. And upon viewing the said photo array, Redacted identified its subject in position number three, Redacted while circling the subject in position number three. Redacted stated, that's who I saw in my yard. He's called Redacted. Redacted further indicated that he also knew the person he identified in position number three by his Facebook name, Redacted. At the conclusion of the photo array two, Redacted and Detective Story, Redacted, uh, bottom of the advisory form. And now we have a cleared close arrest and prosecution document, and this was submitted on April 4th, 2022 at 1752 hours. And we have a cleared close arrest and prosecution document here, and this was submitted on April 4th, 2022. This is a field investigation clear close arrest and prosecution report. And now we have offenders uh, listed, uh, Cole Quincy E, and he's in custody. And he has he was six feet, uh, two hundred thirty five pounds, brown hair, natural hairstyle, brown eyes, dark brown complexion. He was twenty eight years of age, or is or was at that time. Excuse me. All right, and we're just gonna scroll down here to the investigation. First, we list the victims. We know this information already and the weapons. We listed that already. And a bunch of evidence. And some photographs here. A lot of evidence they had on this case, man. They opened up a lot of search warrants and uh, they have, um, seems to be some private videos from gas stations, seem to be McDonald's. There's a lot of evidence involved in this case and they interviewed some more people, which is redacted. And we come to an investigation. All statements contained herein are encapsulated in essence and must not be considered verbatim accounts unless otherwise noted. All distances and physical identifiers are approximations and may not be accurate unless otherwise stated. On December 27, 2021, at 9.05 a.m., Quincy Cole was arrested at the location of 2700 South California by members of the Great Lakes Fugitive Task Force. This arrest is documented under uh, CB number listed. The reporting detectives with Detective David Williams, number 21613, uh, relocated to Cook County Jail and had the opportunity to interview Cole. Beat 5815 um, and uh, ET, which is a technician, arrived at 915 a.m. and took photographs as well as fingerprints of Cole. The interview of Cole was captured on the reporting detectives department issued cell phone using Axon software. Following being read his Miranda rights at 935 a.m., Cole requested a lawyer be present, at which time the reporting detectives concluded the interview. On December 27, 2021, at 11 a.m., the reporting detectives contacted the Cook County State's Attorney's Felony Review Unit. On December 27, 2021, at 1324 p.m., ASA Dan Rohn approved the charge of first-degree murder against Quincy Cole. Due to the aforementioned facts, the reporting detectives request that this case be cleared, closed by arrest and prosecution. Report of Detective Milers, Detective Williams, Area 5 Detective Division, Homicide. I think that's the end of the document. Again, shout out to the Reddit user that submitted this uh, request for this document to be read. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, definitely subscribe, subscribe, subscribe as I will be bringing you more videos and more videos. So peace.